Backwood Solar is America's oldest and most trusted solar retailer with nearly 50 years of experience. Head over to our website, backwoodsolar.com, to get a free copy of our planning guide. While you're there, check out our learning center with articles on setup, sizing, tax credits, and so much more helpful information, especially if you're just getting started with solar. There are also links provided in the description. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Backwood Solar YouTube video. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the Victron Energy Serbo GX, effectively a all-in-one hub device that allows you to connect not only your system components to each other, but also your system to uh, online monitoring or remote portal access. We're going to start off today by taking a look at the available ports here on the Serbo. Starting on the bottom, we can see here we have our main DC power connector here. Uh, this input range on this connector is everywhere from anywhere from 8 to 70 volts. So that covers pretty much any solar electric system here in America or globally. Going to the left here, we have our two main relay ports, marked relay number one and relay number two. And as you can see here, these are a normally open and normally closed relay. Um, moving off to the left, we have our digital inputs our temperature inputs and tank inputs. And these are all quad inputs, accepting up to four connections to each. Taking a look here on the bottom, you can see the four connection ports there. Also off to the left here, we have an SD card slot to allow for local data backup. If you weren't reporting to the VRM portal or just wanted to data collect locally, you do have a port here available to do that. If you take a look down below, we do have some associated terminal blocks that are included with the servo in the packaging. Uh, these terminal blocks here are designed to take, except raw wire. These are these orange tabs here or a spring loaded um, release for that. So it allows easier insertion and removal of wire. Um, again, these are a three position, normally open, normally closed connector. Also included here are some of the eight position terminal blocks. These will be used again for the tank temperature and digital inputs. Same principle as the three position relay blocks, spring loaded terminal connections for raw wire. And the block is then just inserted into the servo, servo's port corresponding to those inputs that you're trying to deliver data from. Taking a look here, on the top of the servo. This is where most of our main system connections, product connections do occur. So looking here from right to left, we have here marked in the silver frame, which is a great distinguishing feature versus all the other RJ45 ports, is the ethernet port. This allows for a hardwired direct connection to your network, uh, router, whatever that might be, modem, um, to bypass using uh, Wi-Fi or any anything else, just a direct hardline connection. Moving off to the left here, these white ports, these four pin white ports are the Victron VE direct ports, as you can see listed here on the front. As we continue along, we have an HDMI port. This HDMI port is basically exclusively used for the GX Touch 50 and 70 displays that Victron offers as an optional accessory. Um, be aware though, however, this HDMI port can basically drive any monitor. So if you're just curious uh, about what the system's doing and you don't care about touch interaction, you can certainly use this HDMI for a display only if you choose. And then moving off to the left, we have three USB ports. Uh, these USB ports uh, have changed slightly since the first generation. This is the Mark II generation of the Serbo. Um, in the first gen, you may notice that this first USB port closest to the HDMI port was exclusively used for powering the display. Uh, but now all these ports are full featured. So if you're not running a display, um, you can use all three of these to bring in external data. And the USB ports 
you can utilize for a whole host of different add-on accessories, including Bluetooth extenders, Wi-Fi extenders, GPS antennas. Also, any of the VE Direct connections effectively are a USB protocol. So you can translate uh, VE Direct to USB directly with a Victron-specific VE Direct to USB cable, or um, you can add a USB hub, a powered hub, and expand effectively the number of VE Direct connections that the server will natively accept. So quite quite uh, feature feature rich ports here can do a lot of uh, interesting add-on components just depending on needs and wants. Looking up here at the top on these bank at the bank of RJ45 ports here, the port or the series of ports directly behind the silver port here is our VE bus port. And VE bus is only used to connect in our inverter network. So we, we will never use VE bus for anything else other than VE bus uh, communication. So inverter to servo communications will, will happen here. Over to the left, we have a pair of VE CAN ports. And then also uh, stepping over to the left again, another pair of VE CAN ports. And this is something that's also been updated on the Mark II version of the Serbo. Um, and the previous versions, these V, uh, excuse me, these CAN bus ports were only usable for lithium BMS. Now these ports are full featured CAN bus ports like the center ports. And these are also isolated now ports as well, these um, CAN bus ports. Um, looking here as well on the front of the unit, we have a series of indicator lights that give us our Bluetooth access and our Wi-Fi access. Now let's go back and look at some of these ports in greater detail. Again, starting here with the relays on the bottom. Uh, these normally open, normally closed relays are what's referred to as a dry contact style relay. And they have a fairly significant current rating that they can drive directly. So in the case of these relays number one and number two, they can do up to six amps, up to 30 volts. Above 30 volts, they're rated to one amp. And then they can also pass through AC 120 volts up to six amps. So certainly you can drive coils of relays, contactors, lighting, and a whole host of other things uh, directly through the dry contact relay here. Uh, if you do need greater current handling, obviously you would use another appropriately rated external relay that's just signaled or switched or provides coil voltage to uh, actuate that larger current rated relay. Moving over here across to these digital inputs. Um, digital inputs here uh, can be used for a whole host of things. Um, they can be used for pulse counting, they can be used for signals, um, any number of things. And again, we have four, uh, four inputs here individually here for the digital side. Uh, on the temperature, uh, these temperature sensors used in the Serbo are the same temperature sensors that are included with the in Victron inverter. So if you have a spare temperature sensor for your inverter or inverters, uh, you can feel free to utilize those in the resistive uh, temperature ports here or in the temperature ports here. Um, they're the same and um, usually if you're doing multiple inverters you don't need multiple temperature sensors so they can always be utilized here for reading really whatever temperatures you choose and it can be assigned to multiple um, multiple things. Moving over here to the left we have our tank input. These are exclusively resistive tank inputs. Um, so be sure if you're going to be driving a tank level sensor that it is a resistive level sensor. If not, if it's a voltage based or current based sensor, uh, Victron does make what they call the GX Tank 140, which is a add-on USB um, plug-in module that will allow functionality monitoring of uh, voltage-based and capacitive-based um, tank senders. Looking here at the top of the servo in some more detail, um, it's important to mention about the RJ45 ports here. Uh, the VE bus port um, is again used only for our inverter communication 
and is an isolated port. Um, so it's not important to fill these ports, terminate these ports on either the servo side or the inverter side. Uh, you can effectively just plug and play any inverter and daisy chain inverters together landing um, with the servo at the end of the chain. Uh, moving over to the left here, these standard CAN bus ports, I think it is important to mention, these are non, the center ports here are a non-isolated port. So included with the servo are a set of terminator plugs that can be placed uh, in any of the open CAN bus ports along that chain. Now, CAN bus is a daisy chainable protocol. So we just have to make sure that the beginning and the end of the chain, whether it's the servo or other Victron enabled, CAN bus enabled devices, that we fill any of these open ports. And primarily the reason for that is uh, CAN bus itself having open grounds. So if we do not terminate or fill these ports, it's, it's a direct path for interference to get into the network. Uh, these new uh, generation ports here that have been added on the Mark II version on the left hand side here are an isolated port. So um, these do not need to be terminated in the same way that the center CAN bus ports do. Along with that, the V-Direct and USB and all these are also an isolated protocol. So no concern there with any termination or isolation. The only other included accessory, as you can see here left on the table, would be the included factory power connector. Um, this guy here plugs into those two ports open, as we discussed earlier on the bottom of the servo. Uh, be aware this does include an inline fuse, so if for whatever reason when connecting power you do not see the servo boot, um, this is probably the first place to look, making sure this fuse is still intact. And finally, here's what the servo looks like ready to install with all the accessories in place. I would recommend keeping the servo with the terminal blocks and the terminator plugs installed just for safekeeping even if you're not going to utilize them in your initial install. I think it's wise just to plug them in for kind of safekeeping in the future. Again the two terminators you could store here in the middle CAN bus ports and all the terminal blocks just plugged in to their appropriate ports. A couple other little minor things to discuss with the Servo Mark II versus the original Servo. Uh, first, if you'll notice here up on the top, the orientation of the RJ45 ports uh, has been flipped 180 degrees, which really helps once the Servo is mounted against a surface to get your fingers in there to get to the RJ45 release, releases. Previous to that, they were installed in the opposite direction, which made it very difficult to sneak your finger in behind the servo if it was mounted to a surface. A couple other minor things to mention, uh, updated from the original servo to the servo Mark II. Uh, one of those in particular is the Bluetooth chip. The Bluetooth chip has been updated to allow the servo to go to more high, high temperatures and not experience Bluetooth cutout. That was a a problem, if you will, that did occur on the original Servo. Uh, to save uh, overheating, the first thing the original Servo would do was to turn off its Bluetooth chip, its Bluetooth transmitter and receiver. And while this, that's not normally an issue, it did become a problem for people that did have critical sensors, temperature, propane tank, or other tank sensors connected in via Bluetooth because you would lose communication with those devices. Again, a pretty rare phenomenon and something you didn't typically see, uh, but it has been corrected in the new generation. Along with some of the previous generations had some issues uh, with the power supply that also has been corrected.